let me show you how to make a really cool photo video slideshow in Camtasia. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Jewel Tolentino here from Esatino Media. And on this channel, we show you how to create profitable content. All right, so what you are looking at is a mainly photo slideshow. There are a couple of videos in this slideshow, but let's just call it a photo slideshow for my dad's 70th birthday. So I had to make one of these and you might likely have to make one of them for someone's birthday, a wedding, an event. And let me show you how I made mine. I played it at the party and everybody loved it. So as you can see on the timeline here, I've truncated everything and you can see there's a lot of stuff happening here, but I will explain everything as usual. So let me play the first clip of it here so that you guys can see a little bit of the slideshow. So that's a little bit of the slideshow. It does go on for six minutes and 44 seconds. And like I said, everybody loved it at the party. So let me break it down for you. So the first thing that I did for this slideshow was gather all of the photos and the videos. That's this line right here, track four. I went through and on my phone and on my computer and I gathered some of the best photos to showcase, you know, my dad. So that's the first thing you wanna do is gather all that together. Then I uploaded them and I placed them all in the media bin here. And you just click the plus sign, import media, and you import all of your photos into the media bin. Now it's up to you on how you wanna place the photos and videos, like which, which ones are going first. For me personally, I wanted to do a mix. So I wanted to do some from the past, some from the present, and just mix it up. So this this first photo, I did start off with an older photo of my dad. As you can see, it's a black and white photo of 70 years ago. <laughs> and this was him in the Philippines. And so I, I did want to start with that photo. And then I kind of went to a present day with him and my nephew. And then throughout the whole thing, I am sprinkling them and I'm mixing, you know, past and present here. So that's that's me right there with my dad and my sister in Las Vegas at the Caesars Hotel in the 90s. So it's up to you how you'd like to place them. After I got all the media in here, I wanted to get the theme of the slideshow. So as you can tell right in the beginning here, the theme is disco because there was a disco ball right here, this clip here. And the whole party was disco themed because my dad was turning 70. So we thought 70, disco, he loves disco. And so the entire party was around the disco theme. So what I did was I found some stock footage off of a website called Storyblocks. And anything that I'm mentioning here, I'm going to have links to them in the description below. And I went and I found stock footage of this disco ball. Now I'm gonna be doing another tutorial on how I customized this disco ball because it didn't normally come in this color and how I made this whole thing here. But I got some stock footage and as you can see here, as you're watching the video, there's a movement background happening, right? There's like video of this disco ball playing in the background as these you know, photos and videos are up on the screen, which gives it, a, in my opinion, a little bit more of a dynamic range for the photo shoot because typically a photo slideshow is just, you know, one photo after another going consecutively just like flat on the screen. So I kind of wanted to make it more dynamic and have movement 
while the photos and the videos are going on. Make it very interactive, entertaining for people. Because, you know, people at the party, they're literally just going to be sitting and staring at the projector screen and they want them to have a good time while they're watching it, right? That's why we chose to have movement, this disco ball, behind the photos and videos. After that, in also going with the theme, I went to go find disco style music. And as you were listening, you can hear it's got a little bit of that flavor, right? Right? It's very retro sounding. I thought it went great with the slideshow. So I get all of my music from a website called artlist.io. I've been using them for years. I love them. They have great quality music. If you want to get two months free off of a yearly subscription, you guys can head down to the description. I will have a link for that. They're my go-to for all music in our YouTube videos. So I've got the music and I've got the video background. The photos are already in there. And so now it's all the little touches and the details of styling everything together that's going to make this slideshow really pop. So let's zoom in on the timeline here and share with you my details. First thing here is the song. I like having my music come in on the, the first line, track one. I always like placing it down there. And then I know that the next layer needs to be the video background because I want that to be as the background to the photos, right? So I like to layer things in the actual layers that they go in. So like I said, I have this video background here, which I got from Storyblocks. I customized it, placed it on here, and then come in the photos. So there's no right or wrong way to placing the photos. Like I said, I went all different timelines, present, past, future, Actually, I don't have any photos in the future, <laughs> just past and present. And then you'll notice I rotated the placement of the photos and videos. So this one of my dad starts off in the middle. Then this vertical one here is off to the side. And then the next vertical one is off to that side. And then the next clip is in the center. So I basically went like center, side, side, center side side again creating dynamic right and just creating some movement another thing you'll notice is on the photos there are rounded corners so if i scroll to the side here and i uncut click this it will be pointed i don't know if you noticed in the design world and online rounded corners are in right now so it's a really nice touch to add to the photos and the video. It gives it a little bit more of a polished look. So all I did was I have the rounded corners in my favorites here. And I always recommend using the favorites. And I went and I just dragged this down onto the photo. And it shows up here, corner rounding. And I rounded all of the photos and all of the videos, giving it that nice polished look. So I went through and I did that. I added that for every photo and video. Then you'll notice the transition from photo to photo to photo to video. There is a transition. So you can see here there's like a spinning thing. Again, creating movement and, you know, not making it boring for the viewer. Because usually when you don't have this, it's just going to switch over to it. And it's not going to create like a cool effect, right? So... I added in one of my favorite transitions that Camtasia has ever released, the whip spin. So this is also in my favorites, can be found in the transitions. There's like, I don't know, over 100 transitions, but really there's only five that I really like and that I use. And I favorite them and I put them here. And I thought the whip spin would be a great transition to add in to you know, go from photo to photo, photo to video. It's a really cool effect. People tend to enjoy it. And so that's what I added in between every single different photo and video. Now you'll also notice that I have many clips of the disco ball here. So the reason why that is, is because this disco ball clip was only like 
what, 15 seconds long. So I had to duplicate the video background here to have it continuously going. And if you notice, there's a little bit of an overlap here. So this one's overlapping this, this one, this one's overlapping this one. And there's a transition here of fade. So it looks like it's just kind of continuing, right? You can see it, it's very seamless. If I did not have this fade and I just did this overlap here, it would look very choppy, very choppy and very cut and paste. And it's just not gonna look good. Again, it's all these little details that make it look professional, right? And then once you have it done for one set, you literally can duplicate it and have it go for the entire duration. Now, initially, I didn't know how long this slideshow was going to be. I just placed all the photos and the videos and saw the length of it. And I saw, okay, it's going to be like 6 minutes and 44 seconds. And so you'll notice the song is not 6 minutes and 44 seconds. The song only goes up until 4 minutes, 5 seconds. So what I had to do was duplicate the song, copy it, and paste it over here. And let me just zoom out a bit. And I had to have it overlap. So as you can see, the timeline's over here. And then the song starts over here. And we had to do an overlap. I tend to do it when the song is going down, right? You can see the audio level of the song is starting to fade, right? Because the song is ending. And then usually in the song, it's fading in, right? I didn't have to add any audio fade or fade out or fade in because the song is naturally doing that. And so the transition of overlapping the audios was fine. And if I play it here, I'll play it as it's transitioning into each other and it's um, it's not too harsh on the ears, right? So I'll just play it. So as you can hear, the two songs transitioning went fine. So you want to make sure to pay attention to that when you're choosing music. And, you know, I specifically chose like an instrumental type song so that I could easily do this because if there was words then you know you'd have to play with it a little bit more it's not impossible but I had to make this slideshow really quick because it was like a lot was going on so that in a nutshell is how I made this photo slideshow for my dad's 70th birthday it was an awesome video everybody loved it if you add in the details you know getting a video background the transitions corner rounding good music you'll have an awesome slideshow to present. So if you liked this video, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you wanna fast track your Camtasia learning, I have a nine plus hour Camtasia course that you guys can get access to down in the description below. If you wanna get really good at Camtasia, I highly recommend taking this course. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.